Just moments ago, some Bay County Sheriff's deputies have arrived on the scene. They took a sledgehammer to a fence back here trying to get to that house. They did get to the house and they knocked on the door. Uh, then they did not get any response and came out. I just asked one of the deputies if they if there's anybody in here requiring rescue. He says they're not sure. They're just checking houses that have very severe damage. These deputies just went around that side of the house. They may be emerging uh, any moment now, but they just went through this fence with a sledgehammer. So checking some of these houses and you can see the damage in some of these places here. Our uh, photojournalist Adolfo Ibarra and I will walk this way. You can see the roof of that house got completely sheared off on the right hand side up there. There's a lot of cinder block damage on the other side. Uh, here come the sheriff's deputies here. Gentlemen, did you find anyone? Uh, all, the houses were vacant. all right, all the houses were vacant, they say. I'm going to show you this house over here, Wolf. Uh, come on over here, Adolfo, because we have video of this house uh, getting its roof sheared off earlier. Look at that. About half uh, that house looks to be gone, but th that major part of the roof got sheared off. The wall got taken off. As the sheriff's deputies move down the street, I can kind of show you where part of that roof went. We're very strongly suspicious that that is the part of the roof that got sheared off. That large just piece of twisted metal right there because we kind of match the colors to the roof and it certainly would project to have landed right there. So again, this is uh, just the first chance that these first responders are getting to venture out into these neighborhoods. They're still telling people though, Wolf, do not come back to these houses yourself between the down power lines and the gas leaks just too dangerous. You know, Brian, I want to show our viewers some video that we have now. Watch this uh, together with us and, and then we'll discuss. All right, Brian, that's the house that you're in front of. You can see the roof simply, you know, being t torn off the top of that house. Right. That's right, Wolf. Incredibly dramatic video. And, you know, you can see here if there was anyone inside that house, they could have been injured. We don't believe there was anyone in there. But uh, this is just what, you know, what we were told was that this area got clipped by the western eye wall of Hurricane Michael. And that is a very dangerous place to be when you've got a Category 4 storm coming in here. What we can tell you also is that these houses here on this side that got so heavily damaged over here, this is on the beach side. Just beyond this is the beach. And we're still seeing some very, very strong storm surge just a few feet from this house on the other side. Uh, we could not venture on the, onto the right side because what appeared to be some kind of a gas or water leak was there. and We didn't want to go too near that. You go down this street, Wolf, still a lot of danger with down power lines. You can see the first responders way down there. All right, Brian, thank you very much, uh, Brian Todd. Panama City Beach for us. Let's go further inland right now to Tallahassee, the state capital. Again, as Nick Valencia is on the scene for us. So what are you seeing, Nick? Hey there, Wolf. We're not seeing the chaotic or dramatic images that uh, my colleague Brian Todd is in in Panama City Beach, but we are seeing streets here lined with debris. And let me just give you a sense of what we're uh, seeing here on the ground. A lot of Spanish moss, a lot of tree lines, uh, tree limbs down. These trees, a major concern in Tallahassee. Uh, it's a beautiful, picturesque city, much of it having to do with the trees here and these weeping willows and oak trees. Uh, but that has become a very concerning situation for the governor, who I spent some time with earlier today. He's concerned that these tree limbs can turn into life-threatening projectiles, just just see how massive these trees here are that line the main thoroughfares here. You may be watching this and say, you know what, Florida deals with a lot of storms. They're used to this kind of uh, severe weather, uh, but not storms like this. In fact, it was just a short time ago that the city of Tallahassee put out on their verified Twitter account that they have not seen a storm like this in a century. And we are seeing those wind gusts and rain bands in fits and starts. Right now, we've been so lucky as to not get any rain, but that wind is starting to pick up. You see, for the most part, these streets are empty save for that debris that's lining them right now. A lot of residents here listen to the evacuation warnings, but this storm, it crept up on a lot of this, and that's including the emergency managers. They've been keeping their eye on this over the weekend as it was forming from a tropical depression, but then overnight it jumped from a Category 2 to a Category 4. I mentioned I was with the governor earlier, and you could tell just looking in his eyes how nervous he was, and I asked him what his biggest concern was, aside from you know public safety and trying to keep all the residents here safe. He says the storm surge is the big concern here for emergency managers. Parts of the state that have not seen these types of storm surge uh, ever in their history here, at least in modern history. Right now in Tallahassee, the conditions, you know, we're lucky right now. It's not raining. We do not expect that to be the case for the rest of the night. In fact, the worst of it here is expected sometime between the 6 p.m. hour, which we're in, and around 8 p.m. is when uh, things are expected to get really bad here on these streets. Right now, though, thank God, they're empty. Wolf, 